Hi, and welcome back to the second in a series of informational videos about nutrition and pancreatic cancer. These videos are being brought to you by Wellspring in partnership with Pancreatic Cancer Canada. My name is Rachel Reed, and I am a clinical dietitian specializing in the care of cancer patients at the Odette Cancer Centre in Toronto. I'm delighted to be able to share information with you about pancreatic cancer and nutrition. I will be providing a series of four short videos focusing on pre-surgery nutrition, symptom management, the importance of pancreatic enzymes, and this video focusing on diabetes and pancreatic cancer treatment. In the video about the importance of pancreatic enzymes, we learn that one of the roles of the pancreas is to produce insulin. Before we talk about nutrition, let's talk about what insulin does. Insulin is a hormone which plays a key role in controlling your blood sugar levels. When we eat, our blood sugars rise as our body breaks down carbohydrates to use them for energy. As our blood sugars rise, our pancreas is stimulated to produce and release insulin. Insulin then signals your liver, muscle, and fat cells to take in glucose from the blood. This helps your body use glucose as energy and keeps your blood sugar levels within the normal range. When people have diabetes, they either cannot produce enough insulin or they can't properly use the insulin that is produced. This causes your blood sugars to be high. People who are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer may develop diabetes or insulin resistance. This can be for a few reasons. Firstly, when cancer grows in the pancreas, it damages the tissues. Secondly, some patients may have surgery that removes part of or their entire pancreas. Both of these things can impact the amount of insulin that your pancreas makes. Some people may have been diagnosed with diabetes before their pancreatic cancer diagnosis. These patients may find that they have a hard time controlling their blood sugars during treatment, even if they had excellent blood sugar control before the diagnosis. Now let's talk a bit about nutrition. You may be wondering, how does diet affect my blood sugars? As we talked a little bit about before, what you eat changes your blood sugar levels, especially foods with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates break down into sugar in your body and cause your blood sugars to go up. However, this does not mean that carbohydrates are bad. In fact, they are an important part of a healthy diet. They are your body's main source of energy and are a good source of fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, and calcium. You do not need to stop eating carbohydrates if you have diabetes. Instead, you can improve your blood sugar by changing the type and the amount of carbohydrate you are eating. You may be wondering what foods have carbohydrates. These include foods such as starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potato and corn, legumes like beans, peas and lentils, grain products like bread, rice, pasta and crackers, all fruits, milk, yogurt and fortified soy beverage, and sugars, including white sugar, brown sugar, icing sugar, honey, agave, and foods with sugar added to them like cake, pop and candy. There are some foods that do not have carbohydrates and do not affect your blood sugars. These include non-starchy vegetables such as spinach, non-starchy protein foods like chicken, fish, eggs and nuts, and fats and oils. Now let's talk about ways to help manage your blood sugars with nutrition. Firstly, let's talk about which carbohydrate foods you should be eating more often. As I mentioned before, not all carbohydrate foods affect your blood sugars in the same way. High quality carbohydrates break down slowly in your body and have less of an effect on your blood sugars. They also have more nutrients like fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Lower quality carbohydrates break down quickly in your body and cause your blood sugars to go up quickly. They also contain fewer nutrients. When eating, try and choose high quality carbohydrates more often and limit the amount of low quality carbohydrates you eat. This will help with your blood sugar control. Some high quality carbohydrates to choose more often are starchy vegetables like potato and sweet potato, all beans, peas, and lentils, whole grain breads and cereals, all fresh and frozen fruit, and milk and unsweetened yogurt products. Some lower quality carbohydrates to limit or choose less often are white breads and cereals, fruit canned in syrup, fruit juice, flavored milk or yogurt, candy, cake, and pop. Some other tips for helping with blood sugars include having regular meals and snacks during the day. Try to not go more than six hours without eating. This will help keep your blood sugar levels more consistent during the day. Try pairing your carbohydrate foods with a protein and a fat to help slow down their digestion. For example, instead of having just an apple for a snack, pair the apple with some nut butter or a piece of cheese. If you're struggling to maintain your weight, 
try adding in extra healthy high fat foods such as avocado, olives, nuts and seeds, fatty fish such as salmon, full fat dairy products, and oils such as olive, avocado, and canola. Even when following these suggestions, some patients will still struggle to control their blood sugars. This is because there are factors unrelated to nutrition which can raise blood sugars, such as stress and medications like steroids. At the same time, many pancreatic cancer patients have difficulty with weight loss. Because of this, it is important to know that you may need additional medications to help control your blood sugars. If you are struggling, remember to speak to your healthcare team. Once you have recovered from your treatment, it is best to work with a healthcare team to determine what diet is best for you. I hope you found this information helpful. I look forward to seeing you soon.